This bow, all bows, aside from a select few, are best used two ways and two ways only. They are high damage weapons that take primary ammo. An arrow, it has a draw time, that's gonna be the trade-off. So the first way, find a teammate, glue yourself to them. Be in their hip. You're gonna have a better time and this bow is gonna perform better when you do that. You almost have to. Do not lone wolf with this bow. Or most bows for that matter. Wow, you zap, so thank you. Come. Got them all. Two on the left, two on the left. Oh, crouch right. Tell me when I can beat. He's lagging. They're pushing, they're pushing. Uh, nice. That was insane. Do not lone wolf with this bow. I'm sure at some point you were told that lightweight bows are just bad. Or that the only viable way to use a bow like the Whistler's Whim or really any lightweight bow, was if you had a combination of perks like Swashbuckler, or maybe Rapid Hit Kill Clip, or maybe Gushaw Straight Moving Target. But what if I told you that you were lied to, and that actually lightweight bows have always had the potential power to outclass almost every primary weapon in the game, and that that potential is not going to be unlocked by any of those perk combinations alone. It won't work because we are lacking in understanding. Let me give you the two truths that I had to learn to unlock the full potential of not only lightweight bows, but of every gun in the game. And if you can learn these two truths, you can do the same. The user commands the used. A weapon does not pull the trigger on its own. The user, the player, you must do that. You make the decision. You aim the weapon. You move from cover to cover. You watch the radar. You talk to your team. The user, you, commands the used. Oh my gosh. Clip it. Clip it, clip it, clip it. And each and every player has strengths and has weaknesses. It's what makes you unique. So the way in which you play Destiny, your playstyle, is going to be unique to you. So you need to know your playstyle, know your strengths, and know your weaknesses. Let's use me as an example. I have good gun skill and aim. I'm very accurate, very precise. My movement is very fast paced and quick, and I typically have very good positioning. So my playstyle is very quick and precise, and I value consistency. And we can see this in how I've played Destiny in the past. For most of my Destiny career, I made a sniper, and I would pair with it a weapon that was consistent and would reward my precision, like a hand cannon, side armor, SMG. So ask yourself, what are your strengths and weaknesses? What do you like to use? And after you identified your playstyle, we can get into the second truth. Triple supers? That's triple supers. If the used, the weapon, is not complementary to the user, then it's useless. For example, one of my best friends, Kit, He's incredibly good with trip mines. He uses Young Ahamakara Spine, and he's building into one of his strengths by using the gauntlets. But does this mean that he needs to build everything into grenades? No, because he has weaknesses too. Let's say Kit has a problem with gunfights, maybe with his aim. Well, it would be more beneficial for him to use a weapon that he's very good with as a weapon to fall back on when he doesn't have a trip mine ready. And when he does this, he's keeping himself from putting all of his eggs in one basket. He's making himself entirely a better player. So when I say that a weapon should be complementary, here's what I mean. Build into your pros. Make the strengths that, that come with your skill set, that come with your playstyle, better. And negate the cons. Make your weaknesses negligible. Or, or make them not noticeable, right? So the second truth is the used must be complementary to the user. Now that you understand the two truths, we can figure out what we want on the bow. Here is my Whistler's Whim. Now you might be thinking to yourself, why is this the best bow in the game? See, I think it's better than precision bows in general, just because of the time to kill difference. 
See, we know that with time to kill on any bow, we should be drawing our string back before we ever get into an engagement. Because we want the time to kill to start when you release the arrow. Now, when we compare the TDKs for both lightweights and precisions, lightweights are always going to beat the precisions. The very best time to kill for lightweights sits at 0.85 seconds if you're going to add on Archer's Tempo. The very best TTK for precisions, again with Archer's Tempo, sits at 0.932 seconds. Now for me, the reason this time to kill difference is such a big deal is because again, I have tried and I've played around with, with precision bows and the very slight difference in time to kill is so very noticeable. And it shuts down my whole gameplay, it makes me move slower which ultimately makes me less effective with my playstyle. So I needed something faster, and lightweights being at that 0.85 second time to kill really opens up a lot of room for me in my playstyle. That was insane. So lightweight bows in general beat out precision bows. Okay, I already knew that lesson, so what's the big deal? Well. Also, the Whistler's Whim has the best in-class stats amongst all the lightweight bows. And with perks, the comparisons aren't even fair. Speaking of perks, what's the role we should want? Now, as I've been trying to get the point across this entire video, is that the role is very dependent on the person, on the playstyle. So if you're good at throwing knives, maybe you want to try swash or kill clip. It'd be great for sixes. Maybe you're a little slower and, and you like to sit next to your teammates. Maybe you should try out Cut Shot Straight. It'd be better you'd be securing yourself a two-shot body. But if you're like me, if you're fast, if you're quick, if you're consistent, then a couple perks aren't going to work. See, I need something that's active all the time, not just some of the time. I need perks that are going to be active in every gunfight to help me win every gunfight possible. So perks where you have to get kills to activate are not going to work out. That rules out Kill Clip, that rules out Swash, that rules out Successful Warm Up, um, Adrenaline Junkie. So all the perks that you have to get a kill to activate are not going to work for me. But also, perks that slow you down, like Gut Shot, won't work. See, Gut Shot has a consistency problem. You have to aim down sights before you draw the string back for it to activate. And for you, that might not be a problem, but for me, the reason that's a problem is when you go ahead and aim, you're having to deal with now this ADS problem, you're limiting your field of view, and now you're slowing yourself down to stay put, to stay stationary, to try and get a kill when you could be using that lightweight trait to your advantage to get the kill. So the only perks remaining in the third column and the fourth column are Thresh, Rangefinder, Moving Target, Rapid Hit, Opening Shot, and Archer's Tempo. Well, we can't really use Thresh or Rapid Hit Thresh really hasn't been useful in PvP for a long time. Rapid hit on maybe precision bows would be better, but rapid hit on a bow that already has 60 reload speed is useless. Because with one reload mod, we're already maxing out our reload speed. Then we have left in the third column, rangefinder, moving target. Now, that might be purely preference for what you want. Moving target will boost your aim assist and help you with strafe speed. But for me, again, I need that accuracy. I need that precision. I don't want my shots to whiff. So Rangefinder is the best pick for me. Why? Because what does Rangefinder do? Well, it makes the opponents bigger. That means you can make micro adjustments to hit their heads instead of trying to make big adjustments. Now, another thing that Rangefinder does that you may have not known is that Rangefinder actually increases the velocity of the arrow when you aim in. And now you don't have to draw the string back before you aim in to take advantage of that. You can draw the string back whenever, and as soon as you aim in, as long as you release the arrow when you aimed in, it's going to have an increased projectile velocity. And when you increase the projectile velocity, what that does is that makes that arrow's path a lot straighter. It travels a further distance before it starts to drop. It makes it a lot more accurate overall. It's like giving us a lot more accuracy just intrinsically, just from a perk. So Rangefinder is the best option in the third column, at least for me. Now when it comes to the fourth column, opening shot would be great if we had Archer's Tempo in the third column. But because Archer's Tempo is going to bring down our TTK, make it faster, Archer's Tempo is the best option. When it comes down to the string and the arrow shaft, you're not going to want to bring your accuracy stat down. You're actually going to want to increase it. So whatever you can do to increase it and also bring the draw time down, that's your best choice. 
Now when it comes to the mod slot, if you have an adept bow, then you need to put a mod there that's going to either help you with your stats or your draw time. If your draw time is already at the floor, then go for accuracy. If your draw time is not at the floor, then go for the draw time mod. If you do not have an adept roll, then the only thing you should be putting there is a targeting adjuster. Now I do think this is the best bow in the game. It beats all lightweight bows, it beats all precision bows, and either accuracy or time to kill. Now we still need to answer a couple last questions. The first one is, what should you pair with the bow? Now this is entirely dependent on you and the situation, but a lot of things can work here. When it comes to close quarters, if I'm getting shotgun aped a lot, I'll use a slug shotgun. When it comes down to a little bit more medium range, I might use a sidearm, maybe a precision frame like the Swift Verdict. SMGs are also very good. 750s right now are very, very good. But it's going to be entirely dependent on the situation and the opponents you're going up against. So try to pair something with it that's going to be best for you. You are going to get aped with this bow. Or any bow in general. So you need to have something to deal with that. <laughs> Another question that you might be thinking to yourself is, well, how do I play with these lightweight bows? How do I play with this bow? How do I make this bow good? Well, if you remember one of the big problems with this bow is its limited visibility. Well, here's the strategy. Here's the trick to get around that. It's the same way that you deal with the TTK problem. See, we lower our TTK by drawing that stream back before we ever get into an engagement. Well, in the same way, you need to move your hip fire reticle towards the position that those people are going to be in. So the first thing you can do is you only want to aim in when you are sure of their location. Otherwise, you should never be aimed in. And once you start to put this strategy into practice, given enough time, the visibility issue that you have won't feel like a problem. The second thing we got to talk about when it comes to bows in general is you have to play your cover. Now, if you look at this clip right here, I am clearly out in the open. And when you are clearly out in the open and you do not have any cover to work with, now the fight is a TTK versus a TTK. Almost all other time to kills are going to beat a bow. We compensate for that with cover. But if you are out in the open, there is no cover, so you will almost always lose that gunfight. You have to use your cover to your advantage. Here's what playing with your cover looks like in practice. Only peek out when you have the arrow drawn back. If you know where they are, aim in and then peek out. When it comes to the first shot, you want to peek out, release, go back into cover, reload, draw the arrow back, peek back out, finish the shot. Another thing to be said here about playing your cover is when you peek out the first time from cover, opponents are almost always going to know where you are. So you need to try and pick a different location to peek out the second time so that you don't get your head taken off by a sniper or you don't get team shotted. So when it comes down to using bows in general, you almost always need to be playing that cover. But for this bow specifically, we also don't ever want to be ADSing until we know where they are, until we know where the opponent is. The last question I want to answer is about what are the counters to a bow playstyle, especially this bow playstyle. Team shot is going to be a massive counter. If you peek out first, people are going to recognize where you are, and playing good teams, they're going to try and focus you immediately because they know how much damage you can do. So when you peek out again, you need to take a different angle so that you don't get instantly melted. Another big counter to bows are snipers. Why? Because if you peek the same lane twice, they know where you are, they place their cursor on your head, and all they have to do is pull the trigger. They know you're going to peek again because you have to peek again to confirm a kill. You have to change the angle. Don't play their game, play your game. <laughs> Ultimately, I think the biggest counter to the bow playstyle in general is yourself. The bow playstyle comes down to decision making, comes down to which cover you're going to go to, comes down to when to engage, comes down to your skills as a player. How good is your aim? Can you make the micro adjustments in a second? Can you account for the leading that you might have to do? Can you hit your shots? Can you deal with people that are going to ape you? What was your decision making like? What was your build made up of? 
Did you choose a shotgun to accompany your bow? Or did you choose a sidearm or an SMG? All these things all come down to your decision making, your aptitude as a player, whether or not you can handle the stress, handle the intensity that this build will put you under. Nice job. Guys, I got a week for you. Got a week for you. Get dumpstered. Get dumpstered. Freaking shoulder charges. Come on, uh, come on guys, I need help. It again. I have mine. Eight minutes. I'm just hit the well, numbers. I'm aping, yeah. Sniper, top. <coughs> nice. Bottom mid, bottom mid, bottom, bottom, bottom. Absolutely not. Nice, nice lesson. That was hit fire. <laughs> in my opinion, this is the hardest thing to do in Destiny. You're making the worst archetype in the game good. You're using an archetype that has a very high TTK that you have to be accurate with to make good. You have to play your cover. You have to make the correct decisions. So when Cool Guy said at the beginning of the video that you can't lone wolf with this bow, no, you absolutely can. That's all I do. That's why I run this. So it's why I love this build so much. But it's not going to be for everybody. Everybody's going to be different. Maybe you're better at certain things than others. It takes a very high skill in order to make this work. And it's going to put your skills, your bow, and the weapons you accompany it with to the test. But let me just say, if you can do this, it has brought me the most fun I have ever had in Destiny. And that's saying a lot. But that's what I think about the bow. I think it's the best bow in the game. I think we've just been thinking about all this wrong. But what do you think? Leave a comment down below. I'd love to see what your opinions are. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. If you did, leave a comment down below. Leave a like. Maybe subscribe if you're new. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Really? Really again? Res? Ready? Three, two, one, go. I literally, I, I taxied got you. It. I, got I taxied it. you. I Did you see that? Did you see that? I grappled onto you. <laughs> Don't you think this is a little weird?